Hey, John. Hey, David, how are you? I think it's a great idea. I yeah. think Jagoff should be in the dictionary. Well, thanks. Somewhere. And I appreciate it. I mean, the mayor's been behind it, Pittsburgh Dad, yeah. Captain Wild Bill. I mean, we got all these Pittsburghers behind it. So, yeah, yeah. you know, Yinzers arise. You, you need Joe Grishecki. You got to give him a sing. Yeah, that'd be, right. yeah, I think it'd be great. Now, here's the deal. Like, I'm really comfortable with that. Sure. But the problem is, is that I have to give this presentation at pod camp. I'm nervous, David. Not too much. I'm nervous. No, no, I'm I nervous. think you'd be great. I'm nervous as hell about this. You shouldn't be. I don't think this is going to work. No. No, it'll be good. So like, here's the deal, like, you're, you know, can you give me some acting tips, some tips like from stage presence, clothing, anything like this, you know, yeah. what, how do I get out there and kind of own it? It's live, I mean, right? There's actual Yo, people. Oh yeah, there's oh, like okay. 8,000, 8,000 kind of people come to this thing. Oh, I don't know what Knowledge, I got like a stack of like 55 overhead projector sheets I'm going to show on. It doesn't change 50 people, 8,000. It's you want to give them yourself, you know, get out there, speak from the heart. You believe in what you're saying, which is nice, you know, it's your own words, it's a thing you're trying to arrange. They'd be tweeting about, hey, he has, he, he's cool, he brought film strips, he brought overhead projectors. Just stand there, look at them, be the appealing guy you are, and, you know, tell them your story. Take a deep breath, open yourself up, let them see your face. So. Hey everybody, I was John, I'm, I write the Jagoff blog, and um, I'm not David Conrad. And it seems so vanilla to me, David. Like, I think I need, like, you know, like, maybe, like, I think I need someone to do my makeup for me, you know, okay. like, before I go out there. Sure. And then, like, I really see, like, you know, are you into these rider things? Like, I think I should probably contact the podcast pe podcast people and say, I need, like, 13 green M&Ms in my dressing room, mm -hmm. you know? And then, like, really, I mean, I know you, you've probably done this, right? You need a driver. Look, I don't want to pay to park downtown this particular day. I'm going to have to pay to park to go do this. I need a driver. Driver, David. I need a driver that has a that gets me out of a car and rolls out like a red carpet and I get out. I like that shirt. Could I borrow it? And then so like we we have these lights and people are holding them and maybe some of them even like strobes. Like, so it looks like people are taking my picture and I do the politician thing and I start giving my thumbs up and like this all happens just before like they're up there going and the restrooms are over to the left and rah 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 and lunch is a turkey in a box no, whatever I, I, and then I no, go up and I go really work. STELLA and I walk on the stage and I go ah! and I go my people my people and then let me tell you about the Jagoff blog I am John I am Jagoff you are my people what do you think? Yeah. That would be great. I wish yeah. you the best of luck. And, um, oh, man, I feel so you know. good. I'm so glad you took some time to be with me today. Yeah. Uh, hey, Dave, David Conrad, touch this. Anybody want to buy it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, testing one, two. Oh, I'm so fired up. Stella! Give it up for John Chamberlain. The Jagger. Come on, give a round of applause for everybody that's working today on this thing. Yeah. Not just today, it's good. Cool. Why is this over here? Can you hear me in the back? No? Okay. Alright, then I'll use this. I'll try not to overmodulate. Well, good morning, everybody. Morning. <laughs> ah, whatever. Huh. Alright. Well, uh, thanks for coming. I wasn't sure who was going to show up. I wasn't sure if anybody brought anything to throw, but feel free if you feel that need. It's podcast, so there's a two feet rule. Two feet rule, and then there's the, uh, I can throw anything you want as long as it's chopping. How's that? All right, so uh, so here's the, like the deal. I guess that would be a really casual. I put some uh, slides together because I wasn't really sure what we would talk about. But uh, if you have questions going forward, just let me know. We just have to be done by 10 o'clock. So um, and I'll do my best not to bore you, all right? Uh, and just a real quick note that it was, um, I don't remember which podcast it was. It was five or six. And I just started the blog. And I heard about this thing called PodCamp. And I showed up here, and I'm fairly certain that I was the youngest one in the crowd, and I looked like a creepy old guy, and I wasn't, nobody knew who I was or whatever, and I'm just trying to figure out what blogging and podcasting was all about. And I have to tell you that, if, how many are here for the first time, by the way? Anybody? Okay. I have to tell you, that was my first time, my first experience, and it was the coolest thing because everybody was so nice. And Missy and Mike Sorg were the first two I ran into. And I think I emailed Missy maybe 10 or 15 times before I even got here. She probably thought, 
what the hell is wrong with this guy? You know, <laughs> and uh, so uh, and so I got here, and they were just super nice, and they've been really super nice, and a lot of people that I met at PodCamp have been super nice since then. So, which is really how the blog got to be where it is. All right, so real quick is I call this presentation really how I got to Hawaii calling people jagoffs because what happened is about one a little over a year uh, six months or so into the into the presentation into the blog I got invited to go or got mentioned at a, at a Hawaii social media summit to talk about that in a second here's some rules for the day relax have fun no sleeping unless you really think you need to go right ahead and then uh, when you see a slide with an animal on it you have to imitate it I mean like out loud Okay, you're not like to yourself, you have to imitate it, all right? Because that's the only way we're going to stay awake. All right, come on, that's it. Because if you don't do it, we ain't getting out of here. So that's, I'm just going to tell you that right now. All right, so the blog puts people on there, like people that don't know how to park, people that don't know how to drive, if you're not familiar with it. You know, every day I try to post something that's kind of interesting, and they're not all genius talented blogs, they're not all crazy funny, but it kind of keeps me in the habit of blogging every day. The biggest thing is that I'll apologize now with this disclaimer that I am a technical idiot. Uh, I really know nothing about search engine optimization. I know nothing about any of that stuff. And, uh, and so any of that stuff, if you came to hear it, you got to figure it out. You, you t feel free to execute the two, two, feet, uh, two feet roll right now. These two guys were the knowledge trust kind of behind. This guy here on, on, on the, your right, He's the guy who said, oh, you should use WordPress. And I said, damn, how do I do this and all this kind of stuff? And this guy on the left here, they, uh, <coughs> um, he, uh, he, he designed the logo and all this kind of stuff. We used to work together. And I'm going to reveal him here. And you can feel free to tweet the crap out of them at this point. Uh, Dan Cacciato is a writer. He lives between Pittsburgh and, uh, and South Bend, Indiana. And uh, I, I swear to God, both of these guys probably purchased handguns for it with a suicide pact at some point when they see my phone number come up on their phone. Because they're fair, you're fairly certain of calling to whine or complain about something. Even last night after I got home from light at night, I noticed the website was down. I'm like, oh my God, I panicked. But uh, TJ did, TJ's claim to fame is he did not kill me when I put up, the first year I had the blog up uh, around Thanksgiving, I had a bunch of Pittsburgh people signed Don't Be a Jagoff shirts and I raffled them off for uh, for breast cancer in, in, in like a, um, what do you call it, like a, a, a bidding war thing. And uh, I, I put it in there, I, thought I was trying to do it myself, and it turned out that I crashed the website Thanksgiving morning. And so I called him and said, I need this fixed. And he goes, what the hell were you thinking trying to execute this on a Thanksgiving? So, so he spent two hours, and Dan's the same way. As soon as the blog goes down, he knows my phone number comes on, probably wants to commit suicide at some point. So you can tweet them if you like. Good, see, you're good, you're good. All right, it's not too early. So a little bit about the blog, I started off doing, the first post I did was the NHL Winter Classic when Mother Nature decided to be a jag off and make it too cold, too warm to skate. Then I met this lady, Karen Weikert, on social media from Hawaii. They own a, they own a, a, a Wahine Media. And then shortly after that, I got this thing called the Most Valuable uh, Blog from CBS Pittsburgh. And then out of nowhere, one day I was sitting at home, I was getting tweets from Hawaii. I'm like, what the heck? And here Karen was out there at the Hawaii Social Media Summit saying, you got to follow this guy, you jag off, because he sent me this t-shirt and blah, 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 blah. Then this past summer, I got the Pittsburgh Magazine, the, uh, some recognition from there. And somewhere along the way, I ended up two years in a row at the Hawaii Social Media uh, Summit in Honolulu. The first year I took my daughter, and uh, she was a senior in high school, had a blast in Hawaii. And it was really cool. And that's, I mean, that's a picture we took while we were there. It's not, not like a postcard. The whole thing looks like a postcard. So that's how I got to Hawaii. They, uh, they started talking about how you build relationships, and they were... They didn't know anything about Pittsburgh. They didn't know anything about a Steeler or what a Steeler was. And they clearly didn't know what a Jagoff was. But they kept saying, like, this guy is just, like, on social media doing this thing. And I, at that point, I had not revealed myself to anybody. And I'll tell you that about that in a second. So the reason why I hadn't revealed myself is that not necessarily I wasn't, I wasn't afraid of it because I wasn't all that dirty or anything like that. I kept it clean because I didn't drop any F-bombs on the blog because I have kids and I didn't want them once I reveal myself to go, my dad says that when he's not driving. And uh, so, 
you know, I mean, they understand those words when I'm driving. But the, but the fact is, is that I had a decent network of friends and whatever, and I didn't want to be like that insurance salesman who goes out and sells life insurance to their friends and relatives and feels successful and then can't sell it after that, you know, because they've already sold the circle. So I just didn't tell anybody because I just wanted to see. And it was really cool because I started getting emails from people go, hey, have you seen? I embedded some of my friends' emails into the mailing list, the original mailing list. And they go, like, hey, have you seen this thing? This is really funny, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, so it kind of gets it. I finally kind of came out to my family in, uh, right after the CBS recognition, about six months into it. Then when I got the Hawaii thing, I'm like, hey, we're going to Hawaii, let's go. So, but the biggest thing, excuse me, that I learned was Karen from, from Wahine Media, when I was in Hawaii, she said, why don't you put your face on that blog? Like, it's decent, I get it. I'm not even a Pittsburgher and I'm kind of humored by it. And she's like, why don't you put a face on it? I go, I don't know, I just don't do it, I don't know. She's like, no, no, you gotta put a face on it. And if you put a face on it, you'll see that things will occur. And that's kind of what happened, actually. I kind of uh, came out in the sense of whatever. I just didn't really like say, hey, everybody, here's me. I just started putting my face on it using videos and things like that and, having some, and going to events. And it, and it did work. It just kind of grew at that point, completely uh, uh, away from anything that I know. All right. See, th those that are streaming, there's a moo Kyle picture. They're not booing at this point, all right? <laughs> My kids would say they were booing. I'm sure they were. <clears throat> the coolest thing, though, about the blog was when my kids found out I was on Twitter and I had more followers than they did, they were like so pissed off. It was so funny. <laughs> my daughter's like, what? But every day she goes, how many Instagram followers do you have? I go, I go okay, whatever. So, um, but, you know, what I came to learn, and this is really, you know, look at me. I, what do I know about social media? Rolled up my sleeves, got in, wrote a blog, tried to say a few things, got on Twitter. As a matter of fact, is Mindy, is Mindy Bates here? One of the, one of the, I made a huge jag off mistake on Twitter one day. People started FFing me, you know, on Friday. And, uh, and, I, and I went and I thanked every one of them. And she tweeted me and said, if your jag off doesn't stop burning out my Twitter feed, I'm going to unfollow him. And I'm like, uh-oh, what the hell was that all about? So then she explained to me. So if you know Mindy, she's like very blunt. And uh, so it was perfect. So I, I learned from, from screwing up and people being nice to tell, give me a second chance. So what I came to learn, but what, what I came to learn is, is something that we'll get into, but really what we all know is this. From a practical standpoint, do we like people that stand around at a party talking about themselves all day long, all night long? Like, oh, hey, I go to the gym, I go to this, I do that, I do whatever, no? Do you like those kind of people? No, not necessarily, right? Do we, do we all like to be heard? Well, hell yeah, we're all on social media taking pictures, doing everything we want to do. Do we like pushy attitudes? Typically, we don't, right? And do we respond better? Let's say if someone, if, if you just get a letter in the mail and it says, hey, please donate whatever, you kind of, whatever. But if your friend hands you that letter and says, please give $10, are you more apt to react to that? Absolutely, it's a personal approach. So. And if we try to learn more things about the other person than we do about telling about ourselves, right, if we kind of live that way, right here seems to be the rules for social media. Nothing's changed since 200, you know, 200 BC or whatever. All these things are exactly right. So if you follow these rules with social media, which is kind of what happened, then, you know, then you, you can kind of win. But what I came to learn officially was this. I didn't know the technical stuff whatsoever. However, I did know from, from my jobs how to build genuine relationships. And, uh, and I'm not talking about, you know, everybody's your best friend and you invite everybody over for Christmas dinner. I'm talking about just genuine relationships, networking and things like that. And inclusion was very important. You know, this everybody talks about user-generated content. And that's kind of what I did. I just started asking people to submit jack-off pictures. And I got inundated with people who didn't know how to park pictures and people, you know, people cashing out at the grocery store with 55 items and they're in the 12 item lane and all those kind of, it just kind of started coming. And then I gave away, I think about three dozen t-shirts like you saw the carrot. 
say, hey, if you gave us a Jagoff picture, I'm giving you a t-shirt. Well, I stopped that shit because it real, got real, oh, sorry. I, I, I stopped that because it got real expensive and I wasn't monetizing the blog at that point. So I'm like, okay, I can't give a t-shirt away to everybody that sends a picture. So uh, eventually I ended up selling the t-shirts and we raised about two grand for the ovarian and breast cancer folks at uh, McGee in the game. Uh, the other thing I remember, I, I learned is that two-way conversation is really key. Like you can't get on there and just start saying, here's me, here's my, if you're a car dealer, if you're a restaurant, you just can't get on and say, here's our coupon, here's what's on special, blah, blah, blah. Nope, you have to get on there and talk about the Steeler game, talk about the Pittsburgh, talk about Pittsburgh things as far as I'm concerned. It has to be, hey, you know, what's, what, and it has to be genuine again. If you've ever read this book, Duct Tape Marketing, it's really cool, but the biggest, the biggest key there is it talks about names, 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 inclusion. In the book, it talks about this newspaper that didn't necessarily write articles on news, but they wrote articles about all the meetings that were going on. They put people's names who were at the meetings and what those people said. And obviously, if your name's in the newspaper, what are you going to do? Buy it, read it. So, right? Unless, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I bought 97 copies of the Post Gazette this week just because I, you know, I got to meet my uh, my all-time favorite, uh, Brian O'Neill. So, uh, so, anyways. It's, it's really, all this comes down to uh, expressing that, um, highlighting that the, it's about them versus about you with, with social media and blogging. Here's some other stuff that you see on the blog if you're not familiar with it. The guy who goes into the convenience store to buy 29 lottery tickets and you're trying to just pay for a pack of donuts or something like that. Here's the ladies from Wahine Media. And again, this really happened, this relation, and you should tweet them like crazy. Because like I said, I was sitting at home one day going, what are all these tweets coming from Hawaii? And it was because the, the t-shirt uh, shot I showed you, I sent them a t-shirt just because I was thankful for them helping me. I, since I didn't have anybody here in Pittsburgh to ask, like, how do you do this stuff? They, I just kind of struck up a conversation with Karen, and the next thing you know, they're giving me all this advice. And uh, so I sent them a t-shirt. They actually, they will tell you the story. They thought it was a bomb. They were like, what is this coming in this box? And they were afraid to open it. And there were two t-shirts in there. They took the t-shirts to the Y Social Media Summit and used the, the, my blog as an example of how to build relationships. And that's really kind of how it all started. And the following two years is when we went to Hawaii to speak. So you should, you should definitely tweet them because they're really cool. And I'll tell you, if you ever have a chance to go to the Hawaii Social Media Summit, I mean, it's like, it's like 400 people. And uh, everybody is just a blast. And they bring in, and you can go see, uh, if you know Peter Shankman, I mean, they get all these big speakers to come out there because it's what? Hawaii. Yeah, so, uh, and it's really cool. But uh, they talked about how to build relationships. They were the ones who sort of reinforced what I was thinking and doing all this stuff. I don't hear any back. All right, there you go. All right, good, good, good. Y'all get a pass on that one. All right. The other thing I realized this, and I'm kind of, I'm not patting myself on the back, I just kind of, this is the way I believe you should be. I think you should just be a genuine person. I hate superficial people, and that's, and so, and, but what does genuine really mean? Like, what, what does it mean to, to be that? And the way I look at it this way in, in, in taking it to social media is this. If you call a company and you get a phone tree, do you like the phone tree or would you rather have somebody answer the damn phone? Answer the damn phone. Answer the damn phone, right. Yeah, very good. She has the best t-shirt on right now. Um, uh, you know, so yeah, you want somebody to answer the phone, right? And the phone trees are okay for a while, but you know, that's, so think of phone trees as automated posts. Sure, they make your life easier, but are they worth it, right? Um, not that you shouldn't use them, we'll explain that in a second. Our, uh, retweets, reposts. And uh, so let's say, let's go back to the example of, um, of someone hands you a letter and says, please donate $10. Or you get this letter with a little sticker and, a, and, a, and you know, some phones, uh, your uh, return address labels in an envelope and you get that at home. Which one are you more apt to, to donate to? The one that someone personally gave it to you, right? So the same thing here with social media is that, how many are on LinkedIn? Okay, how many do the badges? 
please, nobody raise your hand, because I'm going to post you on my blog. No, I'm just kidding. No. I hate those badges. If there was one for Permanis eating and stuff like that, I think that'd be a blast. Right? Or, you know, but the thing about the badges is, is that you can build all these badges you want, but who really looks at those? I mean, you look at it because you get a note. I think it's way more genuine and way more personable for you to say, take time to make one sentence. When people ask me to give them a badge, I say no and I write them a one sentence thing, say, hey, you know, so and so is really good at this or whatever. That's it. Because I think that has way more value and may, much more genuine than just clicking badges that they want me to click so that I interact with their stuff. The same thing with retweets. Now I do retweet and I try to quote and some people's stuff's too long and I try, can't quote with an end. But I think the deal is that if you really, really want to share people's stuff and give them, give them some, hey, I read this blog post or whatever, or this is from my favorite so-and-so, that's what you do with a retweet, I think. And that's kind of what I, again, no genius, it's just kind of what I did. I felt like if I was, and I do retweet, and it doesn't mean if I retweeted you that I didn't mean as much as, I, I didn't like you as much as I like the other guy, but, but, you know, sometimes, you know, we all have to get kind of just lazy. But, uh, but if it really means something, you should do more than a retweet. And favorites kill me. I mean, I like when people favorite thing. It means they kind of checked in. I think it should be saying, I saw this, I like it. It should be a favorite thing. Because nobody really, favorites don't really do a whole lot on Twitter. But, but if you retweet it, then it's really cool. So, but retweeting it with a comment, a personalized comment. Especially, again, when you're doing this in business. And this is what I've tried to do with other bloggers as well. <clears throat> the one thing I found is that <clears throat> when I first started asking questions about blogging, there were some people that were really like, mm -mm, I got this blogging thing figured out, I ain't telling you shit, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, really? Like, really? I mean, are we all millionaires off of blogging? But, you know, but when it came to PodCamp, it was way different. And people were really kind, and again, if you knew the stupid questions I asked, you'd be like, yeah, they're really kind. Even yesterday, Sean's Ramblings on Twitter said, hey, make sure uh, Will, Will Reynolds Young and, uh, and, and Jagoff talk about the, uh, the, um, the fo fantasy football thing for bloggers. I'm like, dude, I can't even figure, I know less about fantasy football than I do about search engine optimization. So, like, I'm just on it, and I'm praying for a win every week. I don't know what so, uh, so, so anyways, so that's genuine, uh, to me, this is what it means to be genuine. And the same thing, I, I'll tell you this, Andy Quayle, anybody know Andy Quayle from Tech, Tech right? That guy, he goes, well, I, I didn't know anything, so I started a Facebook called First Name Ya, Last Name Jagoff. It was, a per, it was, a, it was a, an individual's page, and that's how I was running it. Had a bunch of followers start to grow. I'm like, this is really cool. He approaches me about search engine optimization. We start talking about the blog. He goes, listen, you're violating all the Facebook rules. You need to be a business, like a fan page. I'm like, I don't know. What does that mean? So he goes, I'll convert it for you. I said, okay. He converts it. Like my followers go from, I don't know, like 1,000 to like 300. I panic. I go, what did you do? What did you do? And uh, he goes, don't worry. It'll be okay. Plus, you're abiding by all the rules now. Well, I did panic, then, and, but it's okay now, and it, it you know, eventually recovered. But the fact is, what I do hate is that Facebook does not allow you to be social. It's, it's social media, but then it doesn't allow you to be social. And an example is, when I was an individual, I could get on, if you followed me, I could get on your Facebook page and say, happy birthday, hope no jagoffs, you know, make your day miserable or something. I could send you a personalized greeting. With a Facebook fan page, you can't do that unless someone sends you a note first. So it kind of sucks, in my opinion. So Facebook is, you have to be, make sure you don't take the social out of social media. It's just media, but you want to make sure you put the social in it. So you find ways to adapt. I've first certainly found ways to adapt the Facebook page. By the way, I really kind of hate Facebook. I'm kind of bored with it, but you kind of have to be there. So, uh, oh, let me go back there. So, Anyway, so this is like, you know, this is every time the Steelers play on NBC football, I put this up there and it gets all kind of cheers because it just was, it just tweet cracks me up that we hate him, let alone he looks like him, so it really works out really well. So, so, so this is, uh, this is kind of where, uh, am I getting bored yet? <laughs> That's the other thing. I showed up, this, I showed up at PodCamp 
and there's this guy, bald fat guy, and he comes up, hey, you jag off. I'm like, hey, bald fat guy. It's podcast is so bizarre. And my first podcast, there was, I forget his name, the guy that has the, has the Twitter account where he has a bald head and bananas on his head. And I'm like, hey, you're the guy with bananas on your head. He goes, yeah, you're a jag off. I'm like, yeah, this is cool. So, yeah, there you go, Jacob Sanders, yes. And uh, J B S. Yeah. And uh, so, PodCamp is cool if, if, if you take full advantage of that. So, anyways, real life and jag off collide, and here's why. Because I seriously, the the blog is the is the hardest full time job I've ever had that doesn't pay a damn cent. And uh, but I really like it. I really like it. It's gotten me access to a lot of fun things. I collide twice. But here's what I do. For my real living, I teach nonprofit people how to do better outreach and marketing. And that includes in the social media side. And uh, it's really weird because we have this little thing that we teach people as to how to do good outreach, how to improve your outreach. And what happened is one day before I was like sitting there talking about all this twice, I'm like, holy crap, the stuff I teach is actually what I executed here. I kind of did it in a reverse manner. But it was kind of cool. So if you want, if you're a, if you're trying to do outreach in in whoop, whoa, what happened there? There we go. Woo, panic. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, so if you're trying to do outreach, what we teach you is that uh, education is good outreach. Eating anything with food is good outreach. Validating your group, whether it's uh, religious or puppies or whatever it is. Emotion, striking emotional chords in people's, uh, in, in, in your audience, and giving them recognition, which is a little different than validation. Validating is saying, yeah, you're a school teacher, this is cool to be a school teacher. Recognition is, you're the best school teacher ever, right? And then that all creates a lasting impression. So that's, so when I go back and I look at the blog, I'm like, well, wait, I, you know, do I educate people? Well, I don't know that I educate people, but we have some Pittsburgh facts on there. And we do these interviews now. Every Wednesday we do Yakking with You, Jag Off, and we interview a Pittsburgher, uh, Billy Gardell, Steve Byrne. We've had, you know, and, and we also have the sax man on there. Like, who knows the sax man? What's his name? You know, how do you ever become the sax man that, that berates people as they walk into stadiums? You know, it's kind of cool. So it's informational. And then we do some food photos, and I've actually even got more into that since the food tasters, uh, she takes me around all these great places. It's really cool. And, uh, and so food, so education and eats is part of Everlasting. Then the validation. We honor Pittsburghers, we use Pittsburghese, we use some neighborhood nostalgia, I use it on the blog. So we talk about Pittsburgh, we validate that it's actually kind of pretty doggone cool to be from Pittsburgh, quite frankly. Probably cooler this time than ever in my life. I mean, I grew up going to school going, you know, I had the Pittsburgh dream 20 years ago was grow up Move to Charlotte, right? So, uh, <laughs> and, and now you're like, and it, it's the craziest thing because, you know, on a Thursday night you'd go, I don't know, what are we going to do? I don't know, I don't know. Now, it's like, hey, what a, holy crap, there's five things happening on Thursday night. Which one are we going to go to? So it's really a cool town now. Emotion. Again, nostalgia. The love of the sports teams. I mean, the one thing I know that, um, you know, I love Twitter. I'm a news junkie, so I absolutely love Twitter. And, but the coolest thing is when you're watching a Penns game, Steelers game, Pirates game, and you're on there, it's like you're watching it with 50,000 other people because Ben throws a bad pass, you go, you son, you know, for Christ's sakes, you know, you tweet that and everybody's tweeting pretty much the same thing. Like, what does he know about, you know, we ain't thought Haley, whatever. You're on that with everybody, but you're sitting in the comfort of your living room. And uh, so there's emotion. And, and so for me, the brand of the Jagoff blog is certainly to be on Twitter and so other social media outlets while the games are going on. I figured that out earlier. I was, I was watching them anyways. Recognition. You know, again, I started off by giving recognition to people who helped me. Uh, for uh, he submitted, I gave them a t-shirt. Uh, who was wearing our t-shirts? I had for a while on the blog, we had people I'd say, hey, if you wore the t-shirt someplace, cool, take a picture of it. Take a picture in front of your home. I don't really care. I won't put it up on the blog. So we did that for a while. I got kind of boring. And, and we had some, I mean, the, the shirts fit in Germany, Hawaii, obviously all these places. So I got kind of boring after that. It got too many, a little hard to keep up with. And that's the one thing. If you commit to it, you got to commit to it. You can't, if you can't keep up with it, then don't, 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 don't continue. 
The other thing is recognition is these videos. Every Wednesday there's some kind of, and I try to do chefs, I try to do just, you don't have to be a celebrity, so if you got something cool and you want to talk about a, a non-profit or something, let's get on and do a yakka with your jag off. I'm certainly no Rick Seaback and I'm certainly no Jimmy Fallon, but we have a pretty, fun, pretty good fun with it. The videos run about five or six minutes. I'm really perplexed about the videos though, and I'll tell you this is that I found out that uh, people are, social media people are pretty much lazy, lazier than I am. Because, <clears throat> because on Facebook, I post a link to the blog every morning around 7, and then usually in the evening sometime. And I would post a, a link to the, to the blog to go watch the video on my blog. And I was kind of like, well, some people watch it. But now, then I said, hey, would you like me to just put the, the video on Facebook? Just put it right in the, the native Facebook. I was like, yeah. So now we get way more views. It doesn't count on YouTube, but it gets way more views and way more shares because essentially, again, people don't want to click the link. They want to just see what they want to see and move on. So I, it's, a, it's been a good thing. So again, everlasting. Education, validation, emotion, recognition. And Latin, create a lasting impression. And, and all the, the lasting impression is created by these, these things up here. All right. Here's some of my pet peeves here. Examples. Friday tweets. Like, if you're a robot and you just want to do FF on Friday, good for you. That's great. It's great that you're giving recognition. But why just Friday? Be social. Like, you know, I would put up there people out on Wednesday. I'd say, it's, you know, in Pittsburgh, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, <clears throat> Saturday, Sunday. So I try to say, hey, it's, you know, it's follow Thursday, follow these people. Or I say, hey, these people I'd like to go to a Pittsburgh cookie table with and dunk cookies, you know. You can be very creative. You don't have to use FF, you know. And uh, so, but if you've got nothing else creative, then it's still good to use that. LinkedIn tags. I talked to you about that. Be social. For crying out loud, you know, okay, John's good at PR, John's good at whatever, whatever. You know, I don't know. But at least if I write one sentence, it takes time to write one sentence. Uh, uh, to me, that means a whole lot more. Facebook uh, follow call-outs just like Twitter. Again, the same thing. Facebook's a little weird. You can't say follow this page, follow that page. You can kind of do that. It's a lot easier on Twitter. But again, I think you should recognize some people. You know, don't always be about you. Who are the people supporting you? Say, hey, go follow these, these blogs, these Facebook pages, whatever it might be. Direct mail if you're using marketing. You know, be social. I mean, you know, Hey, happy birthday. You get 10% off your fries when you come in to TGI Fridays or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. You know, do something if you're using even printed stuff. Be social. And blogging, again, be social. Now, it's very different if you're a technical blogger. You know, your blog has a certain personality. If you're technical or humor or whatever, it's easier for a humor blogger, a lighthearted blogger, to be social. But I still think from a technical side, you can be, you can be social. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what to do for this one. I just thought I could slip the pin out here. If anybody actually knows how to go ahead and who knows how to imitate a, a, a goldfish, anybody? <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, so you take a selfie of that picture and follow Spode 411 and she'll show you how to imitate a, a uh, goldfish. All right. At one point, Kim just left. No, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, there you go. At one point, I posted a blog. Uh, Dave Shribman, you know, he, because he, he said you couldn't use the word jag off in the newspaper. So I posted, I said I would never use the word post because that on my blog, so I call it the unnamed thing. Here's another thing you see, the unnamed newspaper. But then it, here's like another thing. I don't just put parking people on there. That it's kind of boring. But the, there's one here. Like, this just cracks me up. When the news people go to someone's house and they interview them, they pick the person with like the word, no teeth or whatever. Now this jackass, he, uh, this guy, this is an old story, but he and his girlfriend got, someone stole their wedding stuff, they didn't have enough to get married, so they went out and they stole copper, and then they traded it in to get money to do the wedding, and then the news called up and said, can we come and get the story, and he goes, yeah, so you, you, they, he knew they were coming, and he still can't put on a t-shirt, and he really needs a chest toupee for sure there, so. Uh, but that's the kind of stuff that goes on the vlog. Feel free to tweet me when you see, again, parking, we call them Peter Parkers. And hashtag Peter Parkers with an S because, you know, Peter is another name for, and, <laughs> right? And another name for that is Richard, 
And that's way too blatant for me. So Peter Parkers, that's how we get to Peter Parkers. And uh, so if you have someone who's not parking well, you can hashtag it with Peter Parkers. But in general, what time is it, by the way? 9.50. 9.50, we're right on target. All right. So here's some things. I appreciate everybody that follows the vlog. And again, and the one thing I did was, I remember trying to get to 1,000 followers on Twitter. I was really close to paying to get some followers. And I thought, that just seems so silly to me. And I couldn't get to 1,000. For me, it was like being on a diet and trying to lose that last five pounds. Like, when in the hell is it ever going to happen? And then I finally just said, you know, after talking to Karen, she said, come out from behind the curtain and, you know, just do what you need to do. And Jason, um, Jason Falls, if you follow him, he's a former Pittsburgh. He wrote the book, No Bullshit Marketing. He's at Jason Falls on Twitter. And, you know, he's, he gave a bit good presentation. He said, just do good content. If you do good content, people will follow. Well, I don't know that I do good content. I do pretty decent content. Every once in a while, I strike it rich on one. But the fact is, is that I stopped worrying about how many followers I had. And then it just kind of happened. And I really don't know where they all come from. Quite frankly, if I have almost 10,000 followers, I don't know that 10,000 people even read the blog. You know, but you know, you know those 10, but they follow, and it just kind of happens. So I'd say, forget about how many follow you. If you have the right content, if you have 500 followers, then that's really good. If you can get 450 of them to take action, and same thing with Facebook. If you look at a Facebook page, they have 10,000 followers, and interaction is 500. Is that any good? I'd rather have 600 followers and have 500 interacting, you know, that kind of thing. So don't worry about how many people follow you. I didn't, and I just, you know, a little, I, yeah, I, I just like the fact that it pisses off my daughter. <laughs> so, um, some of this, you know, some of this is technical. You know, you never get to the Olympics or be a professional baseball player. You know, you have to have some general talent, then you have to have some technical talent that help you with, you know, computers and whatever. So I think there's some of that here. And people like Will and, uh, and Andy and uh, Dan and TJ, I mean, they're the ones who have helped me significantly. And again, way back when Mike and Missy were helping me out, they're the only two names I knew. They probably hated that. Thank you. And uh, you know, some of this is understanding the nuances of protocols. Like I told you, I failed when I, when, and I knew when Mindy Bakes tweeted me and said, shut the hell up, get off of Twitter, quit doing that. So, uh, so I did. I, I listened. <laughs> So, uh, and some of this is based on how to build a relationship. Really, nothing's changed on how to build a relationship. Only the channels have changed. And that's kind of, I think, where it, where it came from as far as this. Remember that everlasting concept? We got really technical kind of there and boring, but oh well. Then you told me how to imitate a goldfish, so we had some fun. Above all, make your social media about the other people, not you. And uh, here's like some lady, this is another thing from the blog where the lady goes and buys like two dozen donuts while she leaves her car at the gas pump and you can't get in there, that ticks me off. And uh, if you ever want to submit a JAG off, you go on the page and submit the picture, or you can just tweet me. And the other thing is, is that right now we have this JAG off, I don't know if you heard about this, we're trying to get the word JAG off into the Webster's Dictionary, which probably isn't going to happen, but the cool thing is Three Guys Optical has offered to give one dollar for every signature that goes on the petition to the Pittsburgh University Medicine Foundation, which is an organization that I work with. So, uh, so that's kind of cool. And that goes until next Wednesday. We have, uh, I think, about 1,800 signatures at this point. And finally, I really believe this. I can't even tell you how much I believe this statement. I used to have this when I had a real job and I had a big office before we all got laid off. I, I, I truly believe in this statement. And I kept this under my glass of water every day and looked at that because I truly believe that. And uh, I really appreciate everybody coming. And if you follow the ball, great. If it's not your thing, that's okay too. Uh, but I've had a really good time. And it's just amazing to me that a few years ago I was here trying to figure out what the hell was PodCamp and how to spell it. And here I am up on the stage. So thanks everybody for being very kind and, uh, and listening. Appreciate it. See you next